welcome to Spill the Tea with the Aveves. Now, today's topic is quite interesting. Yes, we are <laughs> touching on something quite exciting, something that definitely interests a lot of young people out there. Um, but let me just give you a little bit of a taster um, as to what we are discussing. Now, I'm sure you guys are very familiar about growing up in a typical African home, how we are taught to be seen and not heard. You better not join into any of the conversations that adults are having. And even just when it comes down to even career choices, mm -hmm. you know, you've got to do the medicine, you've got to do the engineering, you've got to do the law, the arts, absolutely <laughs> forbidden. So obviously, guys, what we are talking about today is parenting in Nigeria and the generational gap whether or not we can actually bridge this mm -hmm. gap that's what myself and nicole will be talking about so nicole what do you think ah oh, there's just so many things to touch on but i'll just say briefly i definitely think that we need to keep some of the traditional methods of training your child but there is a lot and i mean guys a lot that needs to be changed definitely all right but before we do that oh, yes, yes please a nice little cuppa will do. So after our tea, we'll be right back. So Moe, many times, like a African parents, Nigerian parents, they tend to force children into going down paths they don't necessarily want to take for themselves. Like you said, in an African household, it's either medicine, law, or what was the other one? Engineering, Engineering like something accounting. like that. So if you like say, oh, mommy, I want to be a painter. Oh, it's my journey, it's my dream to do blah, blah, blah. It's dead. Nope. And because <laughs> they are the ones fitting the bill, paying for our school fees and everything, they kind of make you feel like ah, you have to do this. I'm paying for it. As far as you're under my roof, you will do as I say. And you must come first. Yes. That whole coming first scam. Sorry, scam is what I'm going to call it. Because what position did your mom make in school uh, according to her first uh, my mom was first as well what was your mom because let me know. guess she was first <laughs> wasn't she like why do these parents oh, these parents all of our parents feel like they need to lie to us and most importantly i feel like it is also this whole thing where they believe that respect is fear mm. so that's why it almost seems as if there there tends to be a lot of bullying a lot of you know, forcing you into things that you don't want to do. But it's just because I paid your school fees. I was on this earth before you. So mm -hmm. it's almost as if like, you must fear me and you must respect me and you must do everything that I tell you to do. And it kind of, I feel maybe not in all the ways, but it hinders ch Nigerian children a lot because that whole be seen and not heard, you don't really grow up with the confidence that many international children, like I say, would do. Like we have um, younger cousins who like grew up in London and everything. And if you see the way these children will be like, hi, what's your name? They'll be Literally, talking to me like... I could not believe how smart my eight year old um, cousin is. Literally, she is so intelligent she saw me with tattoos and she was literally like oh auntie why do you have so many tattoos and me i was even ashamed like i got this i got this you know it's like a telam and she literally was like oh okay so that just means all i need to get a tattoo is ink and i could not believe that she knew that mm -hmm. i didn't know that at eight years old i didn't know she so at eight years old young kids are aware of and, and they just want to learn they want to tell you what they've learned mm -hmm. they want you to also in a sense maybe tell them what you've learned as well and i feel like parents prevent kids from really expressing themselves definitely and yeah my, my well, like growing up and my friends parents i'm sure you also have your own personal stories there would have definitely been times where you felt like they just didn't let you do mm -hmm. you know express yourself and be you and actually you know i, I actually realize who and what your identity is definitely I feel like a lot of us are moving around not sure of who we are exactly it comes from our parenting and it definitely like has an, a takes a toll on us and affects us in our adult years like you said you end up being a, a nine to five job that you're like why am i here mm -hmm. oh yeah my dad said i had to because he sent me to school and i have a degree in this thing but god damn i hate my life I hate my job <laughs> hate my life hate the fact that i have to wake up at 6 a.m mm -hmm. enter traffic you nine to five guys <laughs> yeah try I feel like respect is given to those who earn it. And I don't think respect is based on age. Automatically, because someone is older than you, a person has more experience and all that, you will tend to want to respect mm -hmm. and tend Baseline to want to respect. listen to them based on their experience and their age. But I feel like we're all human beings. 
you know, and children are developing. A, a child is growing to become an adult. How can you give them so much disrespect? Like, that is definitely bound to make that child rebellious, bound to make that child resentful. I just feel like, no, like, that the, the, the boundaries. Yes, I am living under your roof. Yes, you are feeding me. But it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm a slave. You know, it doesn't mean that I should be disrespected. Now, what age do you think, like, parents should start respecting their child? Like, when the child oh, reaches... Baby. What... No, okay. Yes. Yeah, respect. Because once you start putting an age to something, then that's what it means that, okay, they can wait. They can continue to just be very annoying <laughs> until you're 16, until you're 18. No. Respect your child. Mm -hmm. Full stop. Now, that doesn't mean as the child now, you start abusing your parents because now they are now saying, oh, Jonathan, don't do this instead of just giving you a dirty slap. <laughs> no, no, honestly, like when we get to it, I know I did not have the typical African parents like household. Yeah. My mom was extremely different my dad as well they didn't really force us into doing anything we didn't want to do my mom was always like okay what do you enjoy you want to do that how can you make money off doing that do it if today i was forced into medicine by now only god knows where i would be because also like my school life i was the kind of person that never really loved any subjects i never really had like a great 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 passion until university and i found out like journalism is what i really enjoy so the fact that i felt like i had that support from my mom which i understand a lot of nigerian children and african children don't feel like they have that um, support from their parents so i feel like i was extremely graceful and that is because i didn't have the quote-unquote stereotype of an african parent but did you well, I did. <laughs> I'm even surprised that I'm on this set because I should really be in the court of law. Oh, it's true. You studied law. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. But then again, you know what? I don't think my parents necessarily forced me into studying law. I was literally just one of those. I think this is when, this is even another topic that has to do with this. I feel like my parents just knew that I was intelligent. I could have done anything and they didn't really care. Like they didn't tell me what to do, mm -hmm. which in a sense may look like a good thing, but I feel like they just had a lack of interest and like they just felt like, oh, Mo, whatever Mo does, she will be good at it. So yeah. mm, if you want to be a doctor or if you want to be a lawyer, just come out first and come out with flying colors. That was their own. Well, wait, what, what did you make in? What, what, I came out with a 2 one. Oh, yeah, I'm an intelligent girl. <laughs> Trust <laughs> me. That's my cousin. Yeah. yeah. I am <laughs> feel that um, parents should actually take more charge of you know the practical side of things while I feel like school is more theory um, and when I say practical I mean like they should actually be the ones to actually teach you how to manage money they should be the ones that should be interested in maybe any sort of business um, ideas that you may come up with when you're young and that's another thing I've noticed mm. I feel that young Nigerians especially are not um, I wouldn't necessarily say the word entrepreneurial because I feel like not everybody is supposed to be an entrepreneur, but they're not very business savvy in a sense because you start thinking of running your own business in your late twenties, maybe mid twenties, if you are even all right, you get what I mean? But abroad, you hear kids 13, 15, 13, 18 eight, old. doing crazy things, making money. So that when they reach 16 and their parents say, okay, you know what, give me uh, 10 pounds or 50 pounds for rent or whatever, they actually can. Mm. But out here, your parents can't talk to you anyhow now because you don't get work now, you don't get job, you don't get any way to put money. Your pocket money is from your parents. Exactly. So. And I kind of felt that in university as well because funny enough, in my friendship group while I was in uni, there was only me and one other Nigerian guy and we were the only ones out of everybody who didn't need to have a job mm. because our parents <laughs> were giving you sad to money. say were still giving us money mm. but all my friends in uni were they had weekend jobs and they were all looking at us like oh yeah you guys don't have to do anything like your parents will take care of you mm. and at the back of our minds we were like yeah <laughs> They will until we graduate. So so now, all of a sudden, now <laughs> fast forward, and you have kids that were in that situation in their like 26, 27, and then they now want to leave the house, and their parents are saying no. Of course, they're most likely going to say no because you did chop their money for 26 years. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> so I just feel like if it was a situation where we sort of implemented, and, and it goes as far as government and them just providing things for the young people to do, putting the right platforms for us to actually grow and actually become, you know, law-abiding, sufficient, everything adults. 
I feel it's, it, it, it's, 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 it's even deeper than just this conversation. It literally just means that even the government needs to take charge, give um, young people more opportunities where they can actually make money for themselves at a young age so that they can actually start to adult at the right time. As our generation become parents, uh, my children are going to be stars from the age of zero. <laughs> you have no idea. Everything, everything they must learn. Well, not a must, but it would just be nice if they let like, <laughs> so that they can just be more savvy with life and things. I know when we were in primary school and stuff here in Nigeria, they didn't have many like clubs where children could like own their talents and mm. skills. Like you have like ballet club, all these dance moms, mm. stage moms, they're like professional level as children. We don't really have that here. Yeah, so kids don't have a, a space to develop their talents yes. and their craft. It's a little sad. I feel like parents, sometimes when you see a child that's very vocal, you know, a young child that's very vocal, very, very confident in themselves, asking questions, mm -hmm. they're very, very quick, or even just showing signs of, as they would say, bad behavior, mm -hmm. but maybe not necessarily. Like, I don't know if you heard about this story of this young boy, I don't know how old he was, but he was literally punished in school for drawing on the wall and whatnot. And guess what? His parents are here, maybe pretty much must have taken him out of the school because of all the stress. And then they decided to actually build on his drawing career and mm -hmm. now my guy is making money and he's below 10 years old. probably funding his parents life so yeah, I'm trying to say. so i just feel like you know parents should be more open to the idea of their children exploring not just the typical you know mm -hmm. going to school and university but other because, things especially the arts because there's so many avenues of making money these mm -hmm. days so many not just the professional suit and tie sit at the desk and just bang your head into the wall I'm not saying that you lawyers and or doctors <laughs> hate your lives <laughs> but me personally i don't I, <laughs> I just People don't think really like that. no honestly yeah like i'm a huge fan of gray's anatomy like i love <laughs> that's not really a comparison would how would you save a life mouth to mouth, mouth, mouth. <laughs> <laughs> well a quick question though do you really think that age is equal to respect because that is am i literally eh? what everyone says out here that is a phrase that we hear every day i heard it yesterday <laughs> i heard it this morning yeah who do you think you're talking to eh? small small girl like you you know so what do you think do you really hmm. honestly think age is respect? i think you need to respect yourself before you ask others to respect you and that's just facts like i believe as if you're older than me yes i'm going to want to respect you like you said before but if you're treating me like okay i'm no longer five years old i'm now 25 and i'm an adult in my own right but if you still feel like you need to talk to me like a child then i'm sorry there goes the respect you think you deserve from me i'm sorry no if you can't respect yourself why do you expect me to respect you you clearly don't have any respect for yourself well for me Yes, I already touched on this anyway already. Mm -hmm. I feel, yeah, age um, is not actually equal to respect. As you said, respect yourself. And and I feel like that is even more of a statement to the older people. It's not even about me, a young person, respecting myself. Do you know what I mean? It's even more about an older person. If you respect yourself, if you do what you're supposed to do, don't come and ask that saying, like, because you did something wrong, but because you're older than me, I should excuse it. No. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. Because that's you disrespecting yourself. You're, you're also bringing respect on yourself. Sometimes your actions will bring about disrespect. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So why don't you not, you know, act your age like you claim you are and act respectfully. Mm -hmm. I don't think you can <laughs> insult me and I won't insult you back. I'm sorry. Exactly. Especially if you're not my uncle or auntie you're just some random older person who thinks they can just come into my life and tell me what to do. No, I'm sorry. I'm a very respectable person, but I don't respect people that, you know, don't show, don't show like this. There's something up here. So, I'm sure when you see two girls, I'm sure even in the comment section, they'll say, you two got married. Where's your boyfriend? <laughs> mm. And you know, we, we, I definitely got that from my parents. And it's quite interesting that that seems to be the topic of discussion now. But when I was a teenager, I was not encouraged to date. I remember the first time I told my mom that I liked a boy. Eh? The beat she gave me. <laughs> they beat you. But I'm just still like, you beat me, but here I am, still liking boys. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but yeah, you know, she 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 beats me. She was like, "What? What do you mean, like, boy? Are you okay? You get pregnant? You know that kind of stuff." And 
I even remember like there was a time when a boy he wasn't even he was we weren't even trying to do anything, but he literally mm-hmm. came to visit me. Watch mm-hmm. me. <laughs> he came to visit you. I'm listening. He came to visit me, yeah. and I had to hide him in the guest toilet. If you want to do anything, why are you hiding? No, because my mom doesn't <laughs> matter if she just sees somebody that has three legs. Your, the boy had three legs. One, two, three. <laughs> if you see somebody that has three legs, you are not allowed to step foot in the house. It is very like that. That was my mom, and then now my mom is now asking me, "Where is the boyfriend? Where is the husband?" And it's like you didn't even allow me to date. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm trying to say? Why do you now think that after university and once I get a job, the next thing? Is oh, there's now all these men will just be available for me to just exactly. say, okay, you know what, I, I like it. You have muscles. They married the girl they dated in high school. Exactly. And it wasn't me. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? And then when you explain all these things to them and they finally realize that, oh, maybe they were wrong and they should mm. have let you date when you are younger. Mm. Where is the story? It reminds me of Bridgerton. There's one scene in Bridgerton when she married, when she gets I married. Don't watch Bridgerton, but yes, you never watch Bridgerton? I, I, I should, <laughs> considering that, you know, I like the crown. Period dramas. I love period stuff, dramas. Yeah. I'm a fanatic. Anyway, there's a scene after she gets married and when her husband husband is always like like not he's not trying to have a baby basically so he's always like you know coming to the side and she didn't know what it was because nobody told her so she had to ask her maid like he said he can't get me pregnant is he he can't get me pregnant or he doesn't want to get me pregnant so she was so mad at her mother that she basically sent her into marriage not knowing anything anything about men about life and sometimes that is how we feel because they expect me to go from my university room to my father's house to my husband's house and then I should just know what and to do. And don't forget that they haven't had that sex talk. I'm sure <laughs> that your story may be a little bit different. Mine's, the way mine happened was weird. But you had it. No, but I didn't really have it. It happened like outside Ann Summers. <laughs> <laughs> like she was just like, hey, I feel old enough now. <laughs> I was just like, can we not? So like, she like take into Anne and get you like vibrated. No, we were. We, <laughs> <laughs> oh my I god, mother! No, mom, no, no, we just, we just, ha- we just happened to be in Anne Summers. Okay. And then I was just like, I lost my mom. So I was just like, where did she go? And lo and behold, there she was <laughs> in that section. In that section. <laughs> and I was like, what are you doing here? She was like, I'm just, I'm just, I'm like, I'm not trying to see you look, look at your options. <laughs> And then she now offered to buy me one. I swear oh, to God. Your mom is cool. <laughs> I, was like, I, don't need, I was like, I don't need that. I don't even think I can spell sex in front of my mother. I'm even sure that if sex was to come up on the TV, it wouldn't my old age, my mother would turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> Have you noticed that there are some families, maybe this may not necessarily apply to you. I know it doesn't even apply to me. Mm-hmm. But some um, parents sort of feel very entitled um, in a sense that they feel that they are responsible for your success. So you must actually take care of them. And even as far as taking care of your siblings, I researched a little bit about what this is called. And apparently it's called black tax. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm sure, you, I'm sure you guys who are watching or listening will definitely have heard or have different experiences of how they know of a friend or even them themselves are taking care of their younger ones. Yet their parents are both alive. That's true. You know, and they're also equally taking care of their parents. All of those, you know, examples of having um, maybe your younger sisters or your younger brothers coming to live with you. Meanwhile, you two, you're a young person also equally struggling. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, when you say something like that, it really just reminds me of my granddad my mom's dad and his story my granddad was the first child of like 27 kids my great granddad had like three (laughs) wives and he had many 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 children so my granddad was the oldest and he sent every single one of his siblings to school a lot of responsibility and the sad thing is many of them grew up not really appreciating it they ended up resenting him the fact that he was the one that had money to be able to send people to school there was even one um instance where um, i think one of his brothers accidentally like you know like butt dialed him this was a long time ago my mom told me the story and like no they accidentally butt dialed my mom and my mom could hear them like saying not very nice things about, about my grand her. about my granddad oh, okay granddad yeah and these are the same people that oh, my like, granddad, oh, that, that he took to school yeah, or? are spending money helping. But it's just like, oh, you're just ungrateful. Oh, so you're nice to his face because mm-hmm. you can get something. But behind his back, I beg, is it that one that is it? I beg. So yeah. when I hear stories like that, it's like it touches enough because my granddad was like the best person for me. And it's sad. Like, it sad. 
look at people like Michael Jackson, mm. his family, his dad, even or Marvin Gaye. Even Marvin Gaye. I know that Michael Jackson's dad literally, though, he was literally threatening him at a point to release like you know pictures that, or videos that Michael Jackson didn't necessarily want released, and it's crazy that your own family would do that to you. Or Marvin Gaye, good example. His dad, he literally killed him. Marvin Gaye was killed by his father. Mm. So. It's, it's 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 crazy and and it, it's it's quite scary and I'm quite happy that I'm a single child and they were only child because I cannot imagine having to take care of my siblings. Trust me, I'll pay one semester, the second semester, my dear, better get horse. Because I'm equally horse. You know. Wow, well, I have two older brothers, so yeah. shout out to you. Mm. There's still responsibility do, on me. Today, do they take care of you? I take care of myself. Yeah, that's what I like to hear. <laughs> like these days. As we're getting older, my way, like our age group are now getting married and they're popping out babies. Mm -hmm. And it's now really our turn to be parents. And when I think about like kids from the UK and America and all these other countries, children from a young age, they're so enthusiastic. They're, they're intrigued about many things. They want to ask many, many questions. And like we said, as a child in Nigeria, we didn't really grow up saying much because sit down there, shut up. So many children were labeled as shy and not really confident enough to talk. But no, that's just how we were brought up. Don't say anything. I want to see you, but I don't want to hear your voice. Mm -hmm. So like I said, they grew up very, very shy. Our generation of parents, let's say, um, they never really communicated with us. Um, they never told us when they were going through the hard time. Just, hmm? just come home and realize there's no food in the kitchen. I'm like, sorry, you know what I mean. Like there was no, they, they it, it's almost as if they felt like we were too young to handle the problem. But then at the end of the day, if kids can handle divorce, if kids can like me handle financial um, responsibilities, mm -hmm. then I feel like it would have even been easier if maybe my friends actually said, "Ah, mom, well, tough times. It's long time ago that you're in England. Go and do some work. Mm -hmm. Let's see if you'll be able to." You know help and that's why it's so important that you have to make young people get business savvy mm -hmm. how to make money at a young age i feel this is extremely important another thing it also depends on the structure of one society like you said you're in england mm -hmm. like i went to primary school in england and from like seven eight my mom used to send me on errands out of the house like nicole mm -hmm. go to the corner shop or nicole get on a train and go buy some like stuff for the house that can't happen at eight years old in Nigeria. Which is it one KK you're going to enter at? Like, so we don't have the structure to even give kids that type of responsibility, you know. But what I feel is that even without the structure, all that is needed is just that communication between parent and child. Mm. And I feel like this new generation, we will do it because I see some of you know my colleagues who are mothers. You can just see that there's. You can see that there's more attention, not just to, you know, them physically growing up and doing, you know, going to school and becoming a responsible adult, but there's even just more attention to their mental health. Is your child okay? Is your child happy with life? Is your child happy with themselves? These are questions that I feel parents need to ask, you know, mm -hmm. um, as opposed to just bothering about whether the child is doing is, is going to be a success yeah. financially in the future and we also need to make sure that there's that open line of communication that if i if i do want to talk to you i know that you're going to listen to me and not just judge me and mm. shout at me and tell me i'm a bad child i'm going to hell you know because sometimes kids are scared extremely extremely scared you want to talk to somebody you need some like adult advice but you know if you dare tell your parents like imagine teen pregnancies in Nigeria like how how is that handled uh, I don't even <laughs> want to know like literally they will kick you out and I feel like that's so sad that should not be what is discussed what should be discussed is how about you you're teaching them about contraception mm -hmm. you're teaching them you're actually having that sex talk as I said you, you have sex talk I don't get sex talk I but then you're not sex talk. Baby. <laughs> I, I can actually be at this age and honestly tell you I don't know about sex because why I wasn't taught about it in school well I was in, in England but if I didn't, like, let's say I was actually out here in school. I wasn't taught about it in school in Nigeria. Most, I'm sure most people aren't taught about it in school in Nigeria. And neither were my parents telling me about it. So it's almost like you just throw me into a deep ocean and I should figure it out. And I expect me not to get pregnant in my teenage years. Right. Comparison between children mm. and 
not just in school but mm. in real life saying oh why can't you be more like this person like yeah. this person why can't you be as distant as this person mm. meanwhile we're on the streets together and I'm like oh, darling no, you yeah. get me and that is very very true I have a gazillion examples like literally while I was growing up my mom did this a lot um, and I don't I'm not resentful towards it like I understand where she was coming from she didn't know better but it did affect me because it's like I, I have constantly been compared not just even within my family units then I'll now still go to school ah this person came uh, first why did you come second mm -hmm. then you then move again ah this person that is even doing the same work as you ah she has a G wagon she has car <laughs> why is your she own? has house where is your own you know all these comparisons they obsess me you guys are about to almost tear up like yeah. they, they really do upset me because it does affect your mental health it, it affects your confidence it affects like i literally sometimes feel like ah who am i but i feel like i'm going to a stage where i know who i am god is I, you know now <laughs> so but i can only uh, that's me that's just my personal because i feel like me naturally i don't think you can like i have thick skin but there's some people that don't have skin as thick as that and it must be so unfortunate if you're being chastised in your family talkers of even outside exactly that's even comparing to friends how about when they compare it to your siblings that's what i'm talking that's, about it's so it's ridiculous I was, I, I was compared to my siblings then from then and that's I have, my half siblings and then from then i was compared to my to my my friends and from there i'm now compared to my colleagues and then soon i don't know who they'll compare me to there's now there definitely is a thin line between respect and fear and that is really really implemented in parenting out here in nigeria and when we even say parenting we're not just talking about mommy and daddy in most cases we're actually speaking about your mommy's friends your aunties and uncles like literally like biological you know like you know your relatives and then also those aunties and uncles that are not related to you <laughs> and that absolutely irks me because i'm coming from england where um most people like you i literally will see a four-year-old call me moe and i actually take no offense no offense do you take offense no because that's we, because we don't have the the nigerian mindset in a way we don't all the way have it there mm. so we can we can be like okay i don't see that as disrespectful why my name is mo that's your name and I, you, i'm not your auntie and i don't think that is in any way disrespectful mm -mm. and i don't feel that you adding auntie to my name should now create a sense of fear in the child do you yeah. know what i mean and i feel like that's what that does by you referring to anybody who is older than you even if just by one one year or one month as auntie or, or uncle that definitely puts them above you exactly. and that will always that's bound to make you afraid exactly of, of, of at least them you know what i mean mm. and i just feel these are all the little things that and once they hold that over you, they now feel like they have free range for rubbish to just fall out of their mouths. Mm -hmm. Ah, Moe, you're getting fat. Oh. Ah, you're really adding, you're really... Mm. And this is not coming from my mom and dad. Oh. Exactly. This is coming from my mom's friend or my dad's friend. You, that are, you look like five people put together. Literally, I mean, and that's the worst. <laughs> that is what kills me as well. Like, you literally... Like, okay, good example. I went to get the jab a few days ago. And when I got there, I saw my mom's friend, my mom's colleague who works in the same, who worked in the same hospital with her. She also is equally retired. And she saw me, I was wearing a big boo-boo. And she was like, uh-uh, mo, huh? Y'all getting fat. Ah, now, wow, it's like you do frog jump here. Oh, I hate shit like that. And this woman has an obese son. <laughs> it's not funny. Obesity is not funny. <laughs> So now it is indeed a time for games. That's right. We're going to play a really interesting game um, that is very reflective Ooh. of our topic today. You all know, including you, Nicole, okay. that um, our parents tend to be very oblivious to our problems. If we don't talk mm. about it, then doesn't exist. It. And even talking about it, it's almost like they're deaf. It's like they can't hear us. It's like we're speaking <laughs> Chinese. <laughs> So why do we play that game, huh? Why not? A mix of Chinese whispers and charades. Why not? Yeah. So what we're going to do, we're going to be wearing headphones and you are pretty much going I'm to... I'm going to say some shit that African parents say mm -hmm. and you and have to guess it right. And yeah, so that's <laughs> it. A true reflection of how parenting in Nigeria can be. 
<laughs> Shade. Shots fired. Sips of tea. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm going to be the first to go. And Headphones to on. What this famous quote said by African parents is. Okay. <sighs> okay. So this is a quote. When you tell when you tell an African parent that you are sorry. Moe, can you hear me? I don't want to see your crocodile tears. You gotta act out. You gotta act out. No! You can't read your lips. You need to try, okay? I don't want to see crocodile tears. I don't want to see you cry. You better not cry. Uh, <laughs> cry crocodile tears. Yeah. I need one more. I need one. I love this game. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you will end up in McDonald's. Better pack your load and get out. <laughs> you will end up in McDonald's flipping burgers. I don't know. How do you act this shit out? You, you will, <laughs> will end up. Oh my god. Oh, wait, 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 I know what it is. McDonald's. Love. McDonald's. House. McDonald's. <laughs> Shelter. Umbrella. Look at the M. McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you don't know some. Don't you know some. A pizza hut, a pizza hut, Kentucky oh, Fried Chicken. True. McDonald's, no. McDonald's. So you don't know anything. I, I don't. And you grew up in England. I clearly don't really care about the things my parents told me because, see, they told me these things and I still prove them wrong. Okay, so my turn. Put it on my head. Oh, you can read my lips. I can read lips. I'm oh, great. Oh, damn. <laughs> Give me a harder one. I'm too good. Talk to me. You talk to a boy, you get pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the third one. Is this what you will do in your husband's house? Husband. Yeah. yeah. Is this what you will do? In your this is what I'll do in my husband's house. <laughs> <laughs> well, is this what you will do? So, I'm a, yeah. I'm a, I, I read lips. You're good. All You're types good. of lips. So yeah, so, that was a really fun game. I think I'm just gonna just, you know, drink a little. It's absolutely amazing here on the show. I'm hoping that you guys learned a thing or two, and I'm hoping the parents equally learned a thing or two and also upcoming parents oh yeah yeah because i'm gonna be a mama soon when oh my god will you call your daughter nicole maybe yeah if you're nice to me i'm always nice to you anyway catch you guys <laughs> next time thank you for joining us bye